Hey everybody, I hope you guys are having a great Thursday. Um, I'm coming to you guys today with a little bit of a different video. The other day I was kind of brainstorming. Um, sorry if I'm talking a little low. My son is sleeping in the next room, so I'm trying not to wake him up. But um, I was brainstorming a little bit the other day and I was thinking how myself, I have Googled, not Googled, but looked up on YouTube, um, ways to save money online, ways to coupon, ways to save money in the grocery store, all kinds of stuff. So um, how to live frugal and all those different things. So right now I am not working. I am staying home with my son. So we are just with my husband's salary. So I've been trying to really brainstorm and be a little tighter in the grocery store and really trying to brainstorm and only pick up things we need and um, just different ways to save money. And the other day I was thinking of all these ways and I thought about why not making a YouTube video to share all these ideas with you guys. So a lot of these are things that my family personally does to help save money. Um, a few of these I definitely could do better myself. I need to definitely work on. Um, so don't in any means think I'm perfect at saving money or, you know, stick to these 100%. There's a lot of these things that I need to try harder with. But I wrote down 15 ways to specifically save money in your kitchen at home while you're cooking, just everyday life, and when you're preparing to go to the grocery store and when you're at the grocery store. So... I'm just gonna jump in, they're in no particular order. Feel free in the comments below to definitely list any ideas that you have that I didn't say. Um, I would love to read them. I know they would probably help people that are searching this video. So I hope this is very helpful to you guys and you enjoy this type of video. So um, the first thing that I'm gonna say, I'm looking at my list, that's why I keep looking over, but the first thing I'm gonna say, um, number one, is to always have a grocery list never go to the grocery store without a grocery list. I know if you're specifically just running into the grocery store for like a gallon of milk or some cheese or something, that's different. But try if you can. I know it takes a little bit more time. Um, I know you have to put some extra thought into it, but it will pay off in your budget if you write down exactly what you need. So I cannot tell you how many times I have wrote down recipes like ingredients I needed and went to the grocery store or well scratch that I'm kind of going into the second thing but there's been so many times I've found recipes and stuff and I go into the grocery store and I had the things in my home so that kind of like snowballs into number two shop your pantry while you're making your grocery list that has to do with like what I was just saying there's been so many times I'll find recipes on Pinterest or my cookbooks and I'll write everything down on my grocery list and I'm doing that step but I don't shop my pantry and I end up going to the store and buying cream of mushroom soup and I have cream of mushroom soup in my pantry or I buy extra shredded cheese and I had shredded cheese or I'm like oh I don't think I have any chili powder and I have chili powder so trust me if you one make a grocery list and number two shop your pantry and your freezers and your fridge first it will definitely definitely save you money in the grocery store um because you might find a recipe and be like, okay, I have the chicken, I have the cream of chicken soup, I have milk, I have butter, I have parsley, whatever you're making. And so maybe you only need to buy two or three more ingredients and you've got a meal. So I'm going to check those off because I followed both of those. So number one, grocery list. Number two, shop your pantry. Those go hand in hand. Shop your pantry, shop your freezers, shop your refrigerator before you ever go to the grocery store. It will help you on your budget 100%. Um, the same with household items. My husband and I will go through the house and be like, okay, we're getting low on paper towels. Okay, we're getting low on deodorant. Or okay, little man needs diapers. Don't wait until you get into the grocery store to do that because you're going to spend a lot of money because you're going to say, oh, I might as well grab this while I'm out because I don't want to have to come back out. So watch that. Um, the next thing I would say, I'm trying to think of the next thing to cover best. Um, this one is something I've done recently a few times, 
If you are one of those people that make a grocery list and go to the store, but you have a really hard time sticking to your grocery list, like it's hard for you to go to the aisles and just pick up what's in your budget. Say you have $60 you're trying to spend and these are the items you need and you have a bad habit of spending extra money because you're seeing the cookies and you're seeing the snacks and you're seeing the chips and the candy at the register. You can do Walmart grocery pickup, and in some locations, I think they even do delivery. I'm going to check that off my list because that's a big one. Try the grocery pickup. If you have a hard time sticking to your grocery list and um, that is really difficult for you and you end up leaving the store spending 20 extra dollars on things you didn't need, try Walmart grocery pickup. I really love it. You go on the website. You can see in the top corner how much money you're spending. You can go and add and delete things. It also is super great for the first and second step that I was telling you. You don't even really have to make a grocery list. Like You can literally have your laptop and walk around your house and be like, okay, I'm out of onions. I need onions and add it on. Or okay, I'm out of bread. I need that. So honestly, if you have a if you are one of those people, it's very easy for you to spend extra money in the grocery store. I would really recommend the pickups. I know in my area, Walmart has grocery pickup and in some locations delivery. Um, I think now Kroger, Martin's, Target, and um, there's a local grocery store that does it. So definitely check your areas. I think Harris Teeter does it. So definitely check that if you have a hard time with spending extra money. The next big thing that I would say is don't shop hungry. That goes along with the grocery pickup and all of those things. Um, if you are one of those people that go in the grocery store and you're tempted by food and you're tempted by the cookie aisle and the chips and the crackers and all that stuff, ice cream, don't go to the grocery store hungry. If I eat dinner or you know, something like that, and I go in the grocery store, I pick up so much less. If I go into the grocery store hungry, I'm like, oh, you know, yeah, I have all of my grocery list of all the dinners I need for the week. But you know, I really want to make burritos this week too. So I'm going to throw that in there. And I start grabbing all these things I need or, oh, those um, frozen mozzarella sticks look really good. I think I need those. Or, um, oh, I'm going to grab a soda and a candy bar when I'm leaving the store. If you have a hard time, you're gonna save yourself five, 10, $20 if you eat before you go to the grocery store. Don't shop hungry. I know whenever I do that, I start thinking of all these meal ideas and I have my whole meal plan for the week planned out, but I'm like, oh, you know, maybe I'll go ahead and get stuff to make sloppy joes or, oh, I'm gonna go ahead and get chili stuff or stuff to make tacos one night. Don't do it. Do not shop hungry. Um, another thing, I think this is number five, um, buy generic brands, buy the store brands. Now I know there's a few things. If you know a specific recipe where you know that one of the products is better than the other product, by all means, sometimes you have to, if you know that you like Clorox cleaning products over the great value, by all means, get it. You know, some things, I know when I make um, different dips or macaroni and cheese and I use Velveeta, the Velveeta blocks, I find that the actual Velveeta tastes better, but a lot of the milk and stuff is literally the same milk. It's just packaged in different brand bottles and it charges more for, um, you know, expensive brand over the great value brand. So I try to buy, if I need beans, um, even chips, I buy great value if I need frozen vegetables, milk, butter, eggs, salt, sugar, flour, everything, I buy great value. So yeah, there are some things that you're going to come across where you're like, no, I would rather have DiGiorno pizza over the great value. Totally fine. Not everything is made the same, but a lot of things are. You don't think that Walmart has their own butter production place. No, it's the same. It's probably Land Lakes, and they slap a great value box on it. So definitely check that out. A lot of the products are the same. Um, another thing to maybe consider while you're out, I'll go over this one next, is I know that I have a habit of this because I have a young son and I like to buy convenience foods for his diaper bag. Um, 
This one is about buying convenience foods. Do not buy convenience foods if you don't have to. And what I mean by convenience foods is um, little packets of oatmeal over a box of just like the oats or um, little individual cups of fruit over cans of fruit. Um, my son, I do like to buy some of this stuff because I will put it in his diaper bag to take while we're out or while we're visiting people. But if you can, instead of buying like, say you buy a big can of fruit and it's like a dollar or 98 cents or whatever, and it's like a can of mandarin oranges, you might get your child or maybe for dinner, you feed your whole family with it or your child, like my son, when I cut him up fruit and stuff on his plate, he might get along with other sides, he might get like three meals out of one can where if I buy one single fruit cup, it's kind of a one time and done. And those little fruit, like four pack of fruit cups are like almost $3, two to $3, depending on the price. Some of the brands are even more expensive than that where a can of fruit might be 50 cents, 75 cents, 98 cents, and it would go a lot longer. So like he will eat these little Chef Boyardee little heat up meals and there's like chicken and rice and there's like macaroni and cheese and SpaghettiOs. If you can buy those little containers will be like 98 cents, 88 cents, where if you just buy an entire can that will get him like two or three dinners out of, um, that's the exact same price. There will literally be the same price on both. So if you want to just take those couple extra minutes to heat something up on the stove, um, prepare something just a little bit more, uh, it definitely pays off. Me and my husband go to Costco and buy the big bags of chips instead of buying the smaller bags at Walmart. And I just get Ziploc bags and bag them all up where we can grab a portion size for lunches or snacks. And it is a lot cheaper. The bags are bigger. The chips are cheaper. It lasts a lot longer. So if you can get away from buying like small portioned or um, convenience foods, stay away from it. If you can buy a bigger bag of mixed veggies and just heat it up instead of those steamable bags. I love the steamable bags because they are convenient, but they cost more money. So if you can stay away from those things and cut out convenience foods that will definitely help your budget um another thing is when you're making your meal plan for the week this is number one two three four five six i think this is number seven when um you're planning your meal plan for the week and set down and you're like okay monday we're having this wednesday we're having this um thursday we're having this Maybe try to incorporate a meatless dinner where you maybe make like pancakes and eggs for dinner, like breakfast for dinner. Or maybe you make, um, you open up beans and use beans in, in um, place of the meat. Or maybe you make a meatless casserole or a soup with no meat in it. You could do something, a lasagna with no meat. You can make vegetable lasagna or different things. Um, if you try to cut out at least like one meal with meat a week, it can really help you save money. Meat honestly gets really expensive. Um, I, I like to buy things at Costco. Um, this will kind of go into my next um, one that I'm going to talk about buying in bulk. But definitely if you can cut out, if you are a family that likes a lot of pork chops and um, steak or ground beef or cube steak or different things like that, roast, chicken, if you can one night a week cut out meat, it would honestly, it will really save you a lot of money because meat adds up quick. Um, that's the most expensive part of putting a dinner together is the meat. So if you can do that, definitely try that. I really think it's going to help you guys. Um, Another thing, the next one that I was going into is buying in bulk. Um, so with that being said, with the meat and everything like I was talking about, I like to go to Costco and buy the big trays of ground beef for, um, it's like six pounds for $22, something around there. It ranges anywhere from like 22 to 25 and you get about six pounds of meat. I also really like to buy like, I think it's like 10 or 15 pound bag of chicken. Um, I love the chicken breast and the chicken tenders. We don't eat a lot of meat in our household. My husband and I both are not huge meat eaters. So we will buy that stuff and I, I get the big fresh packs of burger. I cube it all up in like what 
you know, when you're eyeing it, it looks like a pound. And I put it in little freezer bags and freeze it and I have it all ready to go. Um, I The chicken is just already frozen in big bags. So if you can buy um, food in bulk, it's a lot better. I know like if, say you pack a lot of lunches and you do want little convenience bags of chips or granola bars or cashews to pack or different things like that, Costco is way better. I know my husband loves like Jimmy Dean breakfast sandwiches. And instead of buying the little four count boxes or eight count boxes at the grocery store and paying like $6 or so for them, we go to Costco and buy like a big box of 12 or 15 sandwiches and it's a lot better price. We like to buy waffles there. We buy milk there, it's better. Um, if you can find yogurt that you like there, it's better. Um, definitely shredded cheese and stuff. Um, all of these are kind of like going into my next point. So that like buying in bulk, if you can buy bulk for your paper towels, your toilet paper, your tissues, um, cleaning supplies, if you know what you want there, um, all kinds of stuff. If you can buy in bulk, normally, um, the produce is bigger and different things like that, but in the long run, it will save you money doing that. The other thing is to cook in bulk. So like, so we're talking about buying in bulk and cooking in bulk. So cooking in bulk would be like at home, um, say you're making a chicken pot pie and you have all the ingredients. Why not go ahead and make, you're using all the same dirty dishes, you know, you're not gonna dirty your kitchen a second time. Why don't you go ahead and make two or three chicken pot pies? And then all the extra ones you can put in your freezer, your deep freeze, and save it and then you can just easily pull it out the night before, um, pull it out the morning of and put it in the freezer. I mean, put it in the oven or put it in the crock pot. I love to do this. If you're making a lasagna, go ahead and make two lasagnas. You're already doing one. It's not that hard to just add a second lasagna or um, I love to make huge crock pots full of chili and me and my husband will eat it that night for dinner and then like the next day for lunch or dinner. And then I actually pour it all in freezer bags and save it all. Um, hold on one second, my husband. Hey guys, sorry, my husband was letting me know he made it to work safe. Um, so yeah, what I was saying with cooking in bulk. So if you can, if you're already making a big pot of chili, why not just make it bigger and freeze some? I love to freeze chili. I pull it out the night before and pour it in a crock pot the next day and heat it up. It is so great. I love to cook in bulk. Um, fill your freezer. And that helps a lot when you're a busy mom or a busy wife and you don't have to get off from work or pick your kids up from school and come home and cook a big meal. Some days you're just not feeling it. So if you have a whole casserole in the freezer, you can pull out and put in the oven. That is super helpful. You don't have to dirty your kitchen. Um, it's just, it's really nice and convenient. So another thing, let's see. I'm trying to think. So the next thing I'm gonna talk about is packing lunch. If you can pack lunch versus buying lunch every day, I know when I worked outside the home at my past job, sometimes I would be lazy in the morning or the night before and not want to pack a lunch. And I'd end up like running down to Burger King or something and paying five, six, seven dollars for a combo meal that feeds you one time when you could go to the grocery store in your meal plan, um, you know, prepare to have bigger dinners that you could have leftovers for the week or, um, you know, buy extra sandwich bread so you can make sandwiches and take and um, maybe have like little make your own fruit cups and stuff at home to pack in your lunch or get applesauce that you can put in little containers. It way saves money. If you think of how much, if you go five days a week to buy fast food, how much money you could save and put on your debt or save and buy more groceries at home or put it in your savings, you know, Packing lunch saves a lot of money over buying lunch. So that is a huge one. I'm sure you guys already know that one, definitely. But if you can do that, definitely do that. Um, going back to the buying in bulk or cooking in bulk, um, another good tip to think of is, like I said, freezing food. That's one, but also vacuum sealing. I personally do not have a vacuum sealer yet, and I want one really bad. They run a lot of coupon specials on them at Costco, so definitely watch out for that. 
but they keep things really good. If you have a garden and you have lots of fresh produce, you have more than you can use, you can cut it up and vacuum seal it and freeze it. Um, you can freeze cheese, you can freeze meat, you can freeze ground beef that you've already browned. Um, you could just thaw and make tacos one night and make it really easy. Um, definitely, if you can try to use your freezers, um, if you have a deep freezer, perfect, fill your deep freezer. Um, if you see meat on sale or really good vegetable sales or whatever you have, definitely buy in bulk to save you money in the long run. Use your vacuum seals, use your freezers, use your freezer bags, do all of those things. That will save you a lot of money. If you have a garden and you can freeze all your fresh green beans and carrots and everything, that is awesome. So that is definitely one. Um, the next one I would say, um, this is a big one that a lot of people, I don't think you really think about. In my house, we go through so many paper towels. Um, I wash my hands a lot. It's probably an OCD thing, but I always wanna make sure things are clean. Um, I wipe up things, clean my counters a lot, wipe my kitchen table off, dust sometimes with them. But over the years, I've realized how many paper towels I go through and paper towels are not cheap and quality paper towels are not cheap. So if you can in any way use dish rags, even lay a dish rag out on your counter by your sink, um, hang it on a little hook. If you can, when you get done washing your hands, use your dish towel. Hold it one second. Okay, sorry, I thought I heard my son. But um, if you can in any way use your dish towel to dry your hands, um, use it the whole day. Pull out a dish towel. Um, you could even use it if you're just drying your hands with it, you could use it multiple days. But maybe you pull a dish towel out and you wipe, wipe, you know, dry your hands with it all day while you're in the kitchen or you're preparing your food. And then in the evening, you could spray down your counters and wipe it down and then throw that in the dirty, you know, like use it up for that day. And think of how many paper towels or napkins you would save if you tried that. So definitely try to replace your paper towels in a way with a dish rag. If you do that, it saves so many paper towels. I, um, Recently, when we lived, started living on our own, I was like, man, paper towels are not cheap and I got to figure out a way to do this. So I just lay a towel. I've got one out right now on my counter. I, every time I wash my hands, I reach over and dry it. And I normally switch mine out like every day. Um, if I wipe the counters up, I do it. You know, I get a new one every day, but it saves a lot more money than using paper towels. Another thing in... Um, with buying things that would save money is if you have a tight budget. This is something I personally need to improve on because I have a like a water dispenser in my fridge and I also have a Brita filter. If you can get out of buying water bottles and just drinking water, if you don't like the taste of spigot water, I know in some areas it tastes better than others. Um, if you have a Brita filter and it can run through the filters and um, kind of clean your water that makes it taste a lot better um, through the fridge like we put keep our filter changed frequently in our refrigerator when it says to change it if you can do that instead of paying three four dollars for water bottles also it is so much better for the environment if you invest in a nice water bottle reusable bottle and use that or just use your glasses when you're at home if you can do that instead of it using water bottles, it will not only save you money, it does help the environment a lot too. This is something that I struggle with. I tend to buy water bottles for convenience and it's definitely something I myself need to change. But if you're looking to knock $10 a month off of, I know we go through a lot of water in our house. We all drink water. So if you're looking to knock off about 10 extra dollars a month possibly, um, definitely try just using water bottles in your home. So because the filters, you don't have to change that frequently. It way pays for itself by the time. If you're a large family, you could go through two cases of water in a week, especially when kids set them around and waste them. And they are only, if you have, I know like we'll have people over and by the time they leave, you have half water bottles sitting everywhere that you have no idea whose they were and they end up getting thrown away. That's a lot of plastic to get thrown away and that's a lot of waste. So 
Definitely if you can use a water bottle over plastic water bottles, that's awesome. Um, another thing, we're kind of going back. I probably should have started with these two tips. These are the last two that I have in the kitchen area for today or saving money. Um, these are when you are going to the store. Um, definitely always check your sales ads. If you know that you're a Kroger shopper or a Food Lion shopper or a Martin's shopper or anything like that, check your sales ads because definitely like also make when you're making your grocery list meal plan and make your grocery list from your sales ad because that week you know maybe chicken is on sale so you say okay guys we are on a tight budget so we're going to really base our meals this week off of chicken we're going to do some casseroles we're going to do um chicken enchiladas we're going to do some fajitas and just different stuff like that um, definitely shop your sales ad. You can see when your bean, like beans are on sale or when spaghetti sauce is on sale or what items are a dollar that week in the store that you could, you know, meal plan with. So definitely always check your sales ads, circle stuff, um, write it on your um, grocery list, do all those things. Definitely, definitely check your sales ads also before ever going to the store. It's just as important as making your grocery list. It really helps you say, okay, well, I see that the ground beef is on sale this week, so I'm going to buy 10 pounds of it because I'm going to stock my freezer with it. It really will help set you up for the month. Um, the one of the last things I'm going to talk about is something it's kind of not just for groceries, it's an everyday life. I know a lot of people I watch on YouTube follow like the Dave Ramsey um, way of paying bills or paying off debt or living. A big thing that me and my husband have found that has really helped us since buying our home and having our son and me not working right now is having a cash budget. We, every time he gets paid, we have a bill book that we sit down and use. I can actually, I will get it for you and show you guys. All right, guys, so this is the one from last year. It is January, so it's a new year. But if you guys can see how thick this bill book is, these I actually pick up at Dollar General and they're called a home finance and bill organizer. This is our new one for January or for this year, not January. But if you can see, we every time we get a bill, we put it in the pocket. I'll show you guys on the back, not the one we're currently using, but this is what the inside looks like. It gives you the month and lets you write like all your expenses and the due dates and there's places to check it off. There's two rows. So if you have a lot of different bills that you pay, um, lots of stuff, there's lots of room. And it has these nice little pockets for you to store your bills in. So as soon as your bills show up, just slide them in those pockets. This thing has been a lifesaver. I think since my husband and I have been together, this is the fourth or so bill book I've bought. We use this every single year. Um, I go ahead and buy it early on just so I know I have it as soon as the new year starts. This, um, what we do, we write all of our bills in here. We write his paycheck in. Um, I subtract all the bills, figure out exactly how much we have. And all the money, every dollar goes to something. Either some goes in savings, some goes on some debt, or um, we say here is our exact cash that we need to take out for gas. Here's the exact cash this month. This two weeks, we're going to spend just $150 on groceries. Some weeks it might be, okay, we have a lot in our house. We're only going to do $100 these two weeks and just get some fill-in things. So we will go to the ATM once we figure all that stuff out, out of the bill book, and we will pull out all of the cash we need for gas and food and extra spending money. We do not use our debit card or credit card for spending unless it was an absolute have to. Um, cash is so much easier. If you can look in your wallet and say, okay, I have $100 for two weeks for free spending money that's going out to dinner, um, buying myself things, buying things that I just want for myself, it really puts things into perspective instead of just swiping your card and not really seeing, you know, what's going where. And it really kind of, you're like, I don't want to go over this budget. I don't want to have to get into my savings. I don't want to have to use my credit card. 
So if you can really create a cash budget with shopping your pantry, making a grocery list, checking your sales ads and saying, okay, we're going to pull out this week $100 for groceries. Um, I'm going to make my grocery list. I'm going to plan this. I'm going to do the grocery pickup. You know, grocery pickup is a great way to stay on your budget also. Um, even though you have to pay with your card at grocery pickup. So if you're doing a cash budget, you'd have to figure that up differently and leave that in your account to be able to pay for that. But um, definitely another idea, this was not one I wrote, wrote down, but I just thought of, um, always buy in-season produce. So for example, like if it's the season where cantaloupes and watermelons are out, um, they're being produced a lot more. They're easier to get, so they're going to be cheaper. Your grocery stores are going to be running a lot more sales on watermelons, like, you know, $2 watermelons or something like that, or cantaloupes for $1.50 or different things. So definitely buy produce when it's in season you're gonna pay a lot more for a cantaloupe in the winter time or you know like in an off season time um cantaloupes and watermelons are a lot cheaper in um, the summer and the spring because they are in season they're not as hard to get your hands on so definitely if you can buy in season produce and vegetables um or fruit and vegetables if you can, uh, if you have the extra money in your budget when produce and stuff is in season, if you can go to the grocery store, if you don't have gardens at home, buy a whole bunch of green beans, buy a whole bunch of sweet potatoes, buy a whole bunch of potatoes, buy them in bulk, buy 10, 20 pounds of potatoes and cut them up and freeze them, vacuum seal them, all things like that. So that's all I can really think of. Another idea, I just am kind of thinking off the top of my head, cut out a lot of fruit juices or specialty drinks like soda, um, soda, juice, orange juice, flavored waters, a lot of things like that get really expensive. They add extra cost, lemonade mix, all that stuff. If you can drink water, um, that is a good money saving thing. Um, if not, there is like you can buy the big things of country time at Costco or big things of tea. Those two, I feel like kind of last you longer than sodas or fruit flavored waters that are bottled. Um, I think when you can make a whole pitcher of tea and get 150 bags for a certain price, that will last you a lot longer and be more better for your budget. So um, I know this video is super long. I think it's probably like 20 minutes long, but or more. Um, please, if you have any ideas that I did not say, list them below. Uh, thank you so much for watching. If you like this kind of video, I would love to do more videos like this. I have all this stuff wrote down. Um, I specifically put these to the side for just saving money in your kitchen or grocery store. Um, so the next one, I have some ideas on like ways to have dates for a better price or going out, um, some cheaper activities to do. Also just saving money in your home, like, you know, I really focused on the kitchen today. Um, if, you know, you want some ideas just how to save money around your house or even more of me to get in de like um, depth with cash budgets and different things, like definitely let me know. I know I thought about making a video on some ways to make money because a lot of people will post things that I've even tried, like taking surveys and stuff, and it takes forever. If you'd want some like just simple ideas on how to actually make some extra money, um, it might be a little bit more work. It might take a little bit, but to actually make more money, let me know. Um, I definitely think this is going to be a more than one video series where I will talk about some other ways to save money around your house and activities and just maybe ways to save money with having a baby. That would be really interesting to see. So if you guys have any ideas that I didn't say, please list them below. If you have any video ideas, please let me know. Thank you guys so much for watching. Um, I'm sorry this video is so long, but thank you guys so much for watching and I hope you have a great weekend.